Good morning, church. I want to bless God this morning again for another opportunity to come to His presence as His people. So this is the of the pandemic uh, with our online church services. Wherever you, are, wherever you are tuning in, you are coming from, wherever you are, I want to bless God for your life. This is the day the Lord God has made that we have to rejoice and be glad in it. Praise God. I'm going to start this morning with the Bible reading. The essence of the Bible reading is just to prepare for the message, the Word of God. Amen. God bless you. Amen. 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 We've got three Bible readings this morning. The first Bible reading comes from the book of Romans, chapter 8, verse 19 to verse 23. I'm reading from the King James Version. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. For the earnest expectation of the creature waits for the manifestation of the sons of God. For the creature was made subject to vanity, not willingly, but by reason of him who has subjected the same in hope. Because the creature itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. For we know that the whole creation groans and travails in pain together until now. And not only they, but ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the Spirit. Even we ourselves groan within ourselves, waiting for the adoption to wit, the redemption of our body. Amen. The second Bible reading comes from Galatians 4, verse 1 to 7. Now I say that the heir, as long as he is a child, differeth nothing from a servant, though he be lord of all, but is under tutors and governors until the time appointed of the father. Even so, we, when we were children, were in bondage under the elements of the world. But when the fullness of the time was come, God sent forth his son, made of a woman, made under the law, to redeem them that were under the law, that we might receive the adoption of sons. And because you are sons, God has sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father. Wherefore are you? Wherefore thou art no more a servant, but a son, and if a son, then an heir of God through Christ. Amen. And the third and final reading comes from the book of Isaiah, chapter 53, from verse 8 to verse 11. He was taken from prison and from judgment, and who shall declare his generation? For he was cut off out of the land of the living, for the transgression of my people was he stricken. And he made his grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death, because he had done no violence, neither was any deceit in his mouth. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He has put him to grief. When thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin, he shall see his seed. He shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. He shall see of the travail of his soul, and shall be satisfied by his knowledge. Shall my righteous servant justify many, for he shall bear their iniquities. Amen. God, I bring God, God to us. I want you to have a word of prayer. I want you to know that God loves you. He cares about you. Whatever you are going through at the moment, this pandemic, just know that God loves you. He cares about you. He's concerned about your life. I want to have the best of His in your own life as His own child. Hallelujah. Praise mm -hmm. the Lord. Let's pray. Lord, I just thank you this moment, God. By the reading of your word, we thank you, Father. The eternal word. They have been read unto us this morning. We receive the essence of the word. So I commend your word and of your grace. As I commend the people to you for the Lord. The word is able to build us up and give us an inheritance among us who are sanctified. I commend the people to you for the Lord this morning. That they might know you as only through God and Jesus Christ. Him alone that you sent for us. We might find light in our inner spirit. Thank you, God, this morning as you bless us through your word. In Jesus' great name, I pray. Amen. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. What I want to share this morning is what I entitled The Manifestation of Sons in Redemption. The Manifestation of Sons in Redemption. Sometimes it's very good to have a delighted food to eat in the, on the dining table. Very great to do. But it's more delightful if you know how the food is being made. 
So the next time, if the person that made the meal is not available and you want to eat that precious meal again, you can always do it for yourself. We are living in a challenging time today. And for the Christian race, I call it we are in an anchor, anchor time. The anchor race time, we are everything is at a high speed, everything is a fast running. You know, if you go to the sports center, we have the, the, the athletes are doing their relay race. A four by four, the corner of the race. We have four people to run. And you find out that every team produced the, the starter and the finisher on a very high tone. The reason is because if there's an error in between, the last leg have to run with a high speed to make up that they might win the race. When the anchor end of our feet, as God's children, when anchor time in our race to produce the result for the kingdom of God on God's behalf on earth here as to do his work and live for the glory of his name. And we as God's children, this anchor race, if we don't make an effort to wake up, we'll be taken unaware. I remember many years ago reading a book that was entitled, one of the contests said, where was the church when the youth exploded? Because the church was slumber, slumbering, was weak, took things for granted, and before they knew it, youth of that generation bypassed the church. And many years afterward, the church have not recovered from that absence of that generation of youth. They never handed the baton unto. Baton have been given to us in this generation. People are born of God through the Holy Spirit. And God wants to bless our life this morning. I want to begin this journey of this manifestation of the sons of God and redemption by a story, a very powerful issue in the scripture, in Acts chapter 19, verse, if you have time to read that, you can read from verse um, 13 to 20. Actually, you can read it on your own. Let me just tell you what is there because that's not the main focus, but it's something I want to build upon as we go into the direction of travel, of you understanding who you are in Christ Jesus because when the anchor raised, you need to run. It's not time for sleeping. It's not time to awake and, and stay focused. By the reason of what is happening today in the world, the world needs the church. They need us to deliver them. But if, if we don't wake up and take our place, we'll be overtaken at the end of this season, we'll find ourselves. The scripture tells us that in Acts 19, from verse 13 to 20, about some pastor children, we're called, we're called, we're called sons of Sceva. There were seven of them. They're in the church, but they're slumbering. And one day they meet a man who was possessed with a demon spirit. And then the man, they want to come because they had the man called Apostle Paul have just passed by and get some people delivered from the bondage of darkness and the force of hell. They want to try what Paul was doing. They want to make their own personal attempt. But they don't know who they are. They've not come to actualize, that's the best word, to actualize who they are, to enable them function for what they want to do. Today, there are many babies in the house of God. There are many baby Christians who want to take on the next challenge of their life, but they can't. They can't move on. They have not actualized who they are in Christ Jesus. They have been fed from the table. They have not had time to go to the kitchen and see how this food has been made so they can have an experience of it and actualize into their personal life so that they can be able to run, run with the grace that is set before them as God's children. So they can explore, they can initiate, they can be innovate, they can even create, they can even initiate. There are many believers that today. But the reason of this pandemic, the essence of them have been proven to light by the light. That they have been babes. And to face the life they find themselves is a struggle for them today. So this son of Skivas wanted to cast the demon from a man who was possessed with the demon spirit. Instead, that man just rang the bell to hell. Yeah, I got some, I got some seven people here. I know that they are pastor's children, but uh, they, want to, they want to get me out of this man. I'm, 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 I'm in, in, inside. I said, who are those who are those people? He called them and said, No, they're one of us, but they are juniors. Discipline them. One man with the demon spirit took a cane and whipped these seven guys whose father was even a pastor. 
make a mess of them, strip them of their clothes, but they ran naked. They're in the house, they're in the church. The father was a pastor. They were stripped naked. But one man with a demon spirit, one demon cast out seven men. That should not happen in the house of God. Today, most of us, because of our inability to, to use God's word to succeed in our Christian life, we start looking for who to blame for our life. Because the, the next generation of people is now see the ministry of uh, household demon. People look for demon in their father's house, in their personal house, in their parents' house, in their children's house. Or what the, the point they're having for, for one colleague or one person they met on the road, one great grandmother, they found who to blame for their problem because they're not actualized who they are in Christ Jesus. So, because of that, you find who to blame for your limitations and failures in life. That must change from today after hearing this word of God. Who you are is the essence of the manifestation of the songs of God in redemption. Who you are in redemption. That's the essence of. Of this word of God. Because God is after sons. God is making sons. God is raising sons of glory. Sons who will change the course of human history. And this generation we find ourselves today need the manifestation of the sons of God to enable bring a change in our society, a change in our community, a change in our family. And for that to happen, you must grow into a position of sonship. The Bible reading we read earlier in Romans chapter 8, we are told in the Bible scriptures that the endless expectation of the creation from verse 18 are waiting for the manifestation, the showing up of the songs of God. If there's any time we need to manifest as God's children, it is now. With innovation, we need to initiate something to the world. We need to come with creativity. Today they're looking for vaccines for the pandemic. Where are we, the songs of God? To be an answer to the world situations. They, they, even the creatures are yearning. They are yearning to see the manifestation of the songs of God. The songs of God. Why is such very important? You will not know how important it is until you go look at the corner of the scriptures. The Bible says in Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6 Unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. Childhoodness and sonship are two different things. Two different things. Jesus, as a child, couldn't do much for us. But as a son, he brought a redemption. Sonship is a place of authority. It's a place of announcing who you are. When a baby is born, it's energy. We are told in Galatians chapter 4. Uh, four we read earlier from one to seven in that Galatians that as long as you are a child you are not different from a servant you are inadequate informations you can't you can't do some things function for some things in the family you are limited but we come to a place of sonship is a place of accountability is a place of responsibility is a place of principles it's a place of acting on the essence of who you are in the family. For God to save humanity, He didn't just make Jesus. He made sure Jesus was already in a position of sonship. So as a child, He was born. But as a son, He was made. See, unto us a child is born. But unto us a son is is given. No, a son is made. That's about saying John 3 verse 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. It is that he gave his only begotten child. Because as a child, he was he can function with the, in the place of authority and dominion. He can't help anybody. And the reason today why we are most people there's a struggle in the Christian faith of Issues in the Christendom today because there are many, many babies. Sometimes even with titles. There's confusion, argument everywhere. And right now, the end of the special creation is waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. 
And my job this morning by this help of God is to let you know that how sonship comes to be and why you need to manifest as a child of God. And the essence of God in us being able to manifest as the sons of God in the kingdom of God. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 1 verse 30 that Jesus, that God had made Christ to become our redemption. We want to see who we are in Christ Jesus. So we can function as sons. As sons. Then the scripture will say in John 1 verse 12, as many that believed in him and received him, to them he gave the right, the power, the enabling, the capacity to become sons of God. Not children of God, sons of God, like in the the Bible, sons of God. Because sonship is a place of exercising authority and dominion. It's a place of enacting and initiating and innovating the essence of who you are in Christ Jesus without fear, without intimidation, with all emboldenness of God in your inner spirit as a child of God. It's very important. It's very important. So the scripture wants us to come to a place of sonship. Because as Galatians in the Bible we just read earlier tells us as long as you are a child, there is no difference between you and a servant. You are a novice. On a society of authority and dominion. Sonship is a place you crave for as a child of God. It's a place of dominion. But want, in the course of this, I want to take us through the journey. How this sonship came to be. Because when you understand who you are, the signature behind you being a son, you can raise your head and walk, no longer intimidated on the road. No longer have time to blame people. You will take responsibility for yourself and deal with issues as they come into your personal life. You can bring the enemy down. It's not you being cast away again like that seven sons of the pastor, uh, of Sceva and Acts of the 19, who were cast away by one demon because they don't know who they are. They couldn't function as sons. They're your children, babes, who were not able to function in the affairs of the kingdom of God. But God wants you to function in the kingdom of God. In the book of Genesis chapter 3 verse 16, by 15, after man fell, God began the journey of redemption for mankind. He told Satan, the seed of the woman will bruise your head. God was out to get a seed that later turned to a generation. But was the seed of the woman. I want to read it together for you. Genesis chapter 3, verse 15. Turn with me to the Bible. To the Bible. Genesis chapter 3, verse 15. It said, I will put an enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Now, to make it very more meaningful to you, then look at Psalms 22. I want to read verse 30 and 31. A seed shall serve him. It shall be accounted to the Lord for a generation. They shall come and I declare his righteousness unto a people. They shall be born that he had done this. God told Satan, you're going to raise a seed. And the context of God by that seed is that that seed will be a generation. You know, with a seed of maize, you can have bunches. You can have many seeds in a bunch from one seed. God was out to raise a generation that would serve him and live for his glory and for his purpose. But he didn't give the light of that generation to Satan. He said, a seed I will raise. But in the hands of God was a generation. Which we are told in the scripture, you know very well in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9. He said, you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a peculiar people, a special breed. That will show forth that praise of him that called you out of darkness into his mother's life. God was in the process to raise a generation. 
And it's time for that generation to manifest where the anchor leg in the race of human redemption to bring him back the king, to bring back the Lord. And this generation need us to bring this hope to mankind. In the scripture we just read, Mary also read Matthew chapter 1, verse 1 to 7, verse 1. Matthew 1, verse 1. This is the book of the generation of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham. Some will read genealogy. No, it's more than genealogy. It's a generation. Say, so this is a generation. There's something Christ can be generated. You know, we read in Psalm, it said, the seed shall be a generation. The God sending his son was to raise a peculiar generation. A generation that will bring change to the face of the world. And which you are. Who you are. Because the essence of this message is that it will change the way you pray. If my name is Chuki, and you call me by my name when I'm on the road walking, I will respond immediately back to you. But if you go and call me true, that's not my name. I won't respond. But you know, there are many people today who are not responding to who they are. They say pray to God outside who they are. And no wonder your prayer has been in a circle. You have not come to actualize who you are and think the way you are and talk for who you are and speak the way you are and act on who you are. You see in the scripture, the seed of woman. It didn't stop there. And God said in that book of Psalm chapter 23, verse 30, 31, He said, this seed, this seed shall be a generation. And when Christ came to the picture, we are told Matthew chapter 1, verse 1, in King James Version of the Bible, said, this is the generation of Jesus Christ. You will find that if you read that scripture, Matthew chapter 1 from up to verse 16, it talks about 41 generation that surpassed before Christ came into the picture. In verse 17, it talks about Jesus Christ now being born, not of Joseph, but of Mary, who is the seed bringer by the word of God, to raise a generation called, which I call 42nd generation. But the point I'm trying to draft is that Jesus came to generate a people. That he being the seed was to bring a generation of people. And this will are song, ought to be songs. Songs that will manifest the glory, the beauty, the love, the personality of God Almighty. And when you understand who you are in this redemption work of Jesus, of God Almighty through Christ Jesus, it changes the horizon of your Christian life. The way you think, the way you reason, the way you do things, how you build on things. Because when your furniture is solid, you can build anything on top of it. Because you know that it's solid to withstand any pressure. But when it's not solidly built, you are ignorant of who you are in Christ Jesus. You will do what I call pick and choose. And that will not help you as a child of God to succeed in the kingdom of God. And today we live in the earth needs us, the manifestations, presence of God and redemption. You know, until Christ came, or when Christ came to the picture, they thought he would be a political leader. That was what I was thinking. First of all, it was John the Baptist, Voca. He said, yeah, you know, I to be a political leader. It's kind of crowd. They didn't find him, they killed him. They also looked up to Jesus. But Christ didn't come for a political position. He came for a purpose. To undo what happened in Eden. To undo what happened in Eden. To bring back a raising generation, a generation of God. To show forth the glory of God in the midst of the earth. That will represent God Almighty to fulfill God's put on the face of the earth. So in Romans chapter 8, where we read earlier, let me bring some issues out of that spot as I begin to run to where I'm getting 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 to. It says from 18, for I reckon that the suffering of this present time, that pandemic, and no what to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. For the earnest expectation 
of the creation waited for the manifestation of the sons of God. Do the children of Israelites, even this Apostle Paul, were waiting for redemption? They do obey them out, even this of Christ, from the Roman Empire, for the power that had been then. They said, oh, you may be the one to deliver us. But when they found out he was not, he was a different one. He didn't come for political emancipation. From the taxes of the Roman Empire. They killed him. They killed him. The master. The world today is craving for answer to the quest before them. And God wants us to rise up, not as children, but as sons. He wants to rise up as sons in the kingdom. Now, let me look at uh, uh, Isaiah 53. I want to read verse 8. What we read earlier. Isaiah 53, 53. I want to read verse 8. He said, verse 8 says, He was taken from the prison and from judgment. Who shall declare his generation? For he was cut out of the land of the living. For the transgression of my people was his stricken. Now in verse 10 he said, Yet he pleased the Lord to bruise him. He had put him to grief. When thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin. He shall see his seed. His seed. He shall prolong his days. And the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper. In his hand. There was a question in chapter 8. In verse 8. Who will declare his generation? How can somebody want to bring forth people he has not, he wasn't married? Jesus is here to raise generation. You have to get married. And when God spoke to Abraham, he said, through you, I'll bring forth a child. It was so clear. He said, through Adam and Eve, he will bring forth a child. And generation came. But God wants to raise a generation through Jesus Christ as a seed. But how will he come? How would those seeds come? How would there be a manifestation of these songs? Who will take on the world, take on Satan, and put him where he belongs? Who will take on issues and sort them out in the world? Who will answer the quest in the world of the master Jesus come? How can that happen? So I was asking the question, who will declare his generation? That was the hard question as I was carrying. And when Christ came to the picture in Matthew 1 verse 1, he began to raise a generation. Preach the gospel. Teach God's word. Say what God was saying about people's lives. The Bible says in the book of Revelation chapter 5, from verse 9 to 10, so they sang a new song. I'm beginning to make a declaration in verse 10. Which is so powerful to read. Revelation chapter 5. It says, And they sang a new song. Thou art worthy to take the scroll and to open the seal. For thou was slain and I redeemed us to God. Us to God. Us. <laughs> By thy blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation that made us unto our God kings and priests. And we shall reign on the earth. We shall reign on the earth. In chapter 1 of that same revelation, verse 5 and 6, the Bible says concerning Jesus also. And from Jesus Christ, who is the first witness, faithful witness, and the first begotten of the dead, and the prince of the kings of the earth, Unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood, and made us kings and priests unto God, and his father unto his father, and to him be glory and honor, dominion forever and ever. Amen. In John 1 18, no man has seen God at any time except the only begotten Son, who is the bosom of the Father. He had declared him. God to save mankind, he had to send Jesus. We are told he was the only because of the Father God. In John 3, 16, we are also told, For God so loved the world, that he sent who the only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him will not perish, but have eternal life. We know that when Christ was baptized in Matthew chapter 3, from verse 16 
and 17, were told when he rose from the water. He said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. And before Christ came, unto Christ, he was the only because of the Father God. But when he died and paid the price for our redemption, we are told in that place we read in Revelation chapter 1 verse 5 to 6, say, we say it will become a begotten of the Father, will become a part of the begotten of God the Father. But how do we become a begotten people of God? How do we become a begotten people of God when he can say he has redeemed us? A seed has become an us. One seed has become an us. From every kindred and tongue and nation and people made to be kings and priests unto our God. How did he come? How did what God said in Genesis chapter 3 verse 15 come to reality for you and I to manifest as sons of God? Because right now, there's an expectation that you and I should manifest as God's own children. People need you. Your family need you as an answer to the quest in their life. You've been born again in a family. They need you to bring their salvation. Your community needs you. Your street people need you. Your nation need you. It's time to manifest. Enough of hiding. God is not making children of God. He's making sons of God. The word saint is a non-gender. It's a non-gender. In the Bible says in Christ Jesus, there's no male or female. When you go and read the scripture of Galatians chapter 3 from verse 26 to 29. There's no male or female. There's no gender. When God looks at you and I every day, he doesn't see you a male, he doesn't see you a female. He sees sons. He sees his image. God's image is not a male or a female. It is a body clothing that makes us male and female. But the real you is neither a male nor a female. It's God's image. In the realm of the spirit, there's no male or female. Let us try to explain to us in Galatians chapter 3 from verse 26 to 29. Saying, so in Christ Jesus, there's no barbarian, there's no Jew, there's no Greek, there's no male, there's no female. We are all one. So God talking about the of sons of God is talking of you and I, whether I'm male or female. That's why when we get born again, people get born again in the Bible days, and until now, male and female are filled with the Holy Spirit. There's no separation. So the sons, we have the Holy Spirit, some Holy Spirit. The female will not have the Holy Spirit. No. The day of Pentecost, the male and female, that each one of them were baptized and filled with the Holy Ghost. I'm speaking forth in another thought. So they are not limited to succeed as a woman or as a man. Nobody's limited by the power of the Holy Spirit of God. But God's essence is to bring forth a generation from that seed. The Bible says in Isaiah 53 verse 8, after that question was asked, we're told, if you remember very carefully, a light for you and I, in Genesis chapter 2, verse 20 to 20, 22, God made Adam. But Eve was not made the way Adam was made. Remember the story? For God to raise the first generation of people, he did an operation on Adam. I would say, Adam fell asleep. Let me, let me read it for you so you understand what I mean. Genesis chapter 2, verse 21 to 22. He said, and the Lord caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam. And he slept. And he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof. And the rib which the Lord had taken from him, man, made he a woman and brought her unto the man. When Adam was made, there was no generation. It was only a seed. But for God to reproduce a generation, he has to put Adam to sleep. He did a surgical operation on Adam. I guess some water and blood would have come out. He brought up Eve. And by that act, a generation was born. Name them. You know them very well in the scriptures. Everyone began to come out. They were born. Unto us we were born. 
Now for God to give birth a spiritual generation, when Jesus was being crucified on the cross of Calvary, as the scripture tells us, he was pierced by the side. You know, if a woman is to deliver a baby, we are told that she will break out water. And that process by water and blood, a child is born. The child that is born, go for the being for his own child, and generation were born. So, so go for God to bring forth you and I as a chosen generation. Jesus was pierced by the side. Let's look at the scriptures. Let's look at the scriptures. Let's see the event that bring forth the sons of God. John 19, 34 to 37. But one of the soldiers with a spear pierced his side and immediately came there out blood and water. And he that saw it bore witness, and his witness is true. And he knew that he that he said he that said true that he might believe. For those things were done that the scripture should be fulfilled, a bone of him shall not be broken. And again, another scripture said, They shall look on him whom they pierce. When Jesus was being crucified. Or the soldier take a knife, a, pier, a, a, a sword, and pierce his side. But we say blood and water came forth. If you recall in the Bible that we read in Isaiah 53, we are told that he was pierced. He was bruised. It even pleased God that it happens. Because that was God asked for human redemption. When that was happening, when Christ was being pierced, and blood, water was coming forth. Then we were born. Then a generation was being raised. Jesus been the seed day by to a generation. Fulfilling the scripture, Psalm 30, 22, verse 30 to 31. A seed shall serve him, shall be accounted to the Lord for a generation. They shall come and shall declare his righteousness unto a people. Shall be born that he had done this. A generation for raised out of the seed. When you also look the same art in the book of Isaiah 53. I think a couple of scriptures in that 53 we read earlier. It says in verse 8, he was taken from the prison and from judgment. Who shall declare generation? For he was cut out of the land of the living, for the transgression of my people was he stricken. We're told in verse 10, yea, he pleased the Lord to bruise him. Yeah, I put him to grief when thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin. When he was put on the cross, he shall see his seed. He shall prolong his days. And the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. He said, verse 11, he shall see of the survey of his soul and shall be satisfied. By his, by his knowledge shall my righteous servant justify many. For he shall bear the bear their iniquities. That's what Christ did for us. We're told in verse 12, Therefore, we divide him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the poor with the strong. Because he has poured out his soul unto death, and he was numbered with the transgressors, and he bore the sin of many, and made intercession for the transgressors. Jesus bore sin for many. But above that, when he was pierced by the sun, he brings forth sons. A generation of sons were brought forth. We're told in the scripture in 1 John chapter 5. First John chapter 5. Then look at verse 6 to 8. It says, This is he that came by water and blood, even Jesus Christ. Not by water only, but by water and blood. It is the Spirit that bear witness, because the Spirit is truth. For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit, and these three are one. Verse 8. There are three that bear witness on earth, the spirit, the water, and the blood. And these three are well. For Christ to be born, to save humanity, blood came out through Mary, and Christ came to be. For us to come to God, and become God's children, Christ lose blood. When you are being born, God did an operation in Christ Jesus, like he did in Adam to bring to bring forth. A generation afterwards through Adam and Eve. 
Go up bringing forth songs unto glory. Go up bring forth a generation unto glory. God was there to bring forth a people that will serve him in spirit and in truth. That's why when Jesus was talking to Nicodemus in John chapter 3 from verse 3 to 5, he said, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. But in verse 5, he said, except a man be born of water and spirit, he can't. There's something. What bring you forth come through that piercing? Piercing of the side of Jesus Christ. John 3. I read for us again, even though I've said something about it. He said, verse 5, Jesus answers very ascent to you. He said, a man be born of water and of the spirit. He cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh, flesh, that which is born of the spirit, is spirit. Because why? For you to be born of God, you have to be an act of that act that God did by the Son. A generation was raised. To become sons of God. The Bible says in that first Peter chapter 2, verse 9, verse 5 and 9, that we are a new generation, a real priesthood, a peculiar people, to show forth the praise of him that called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. You are born of water and the blood. Christ was pierced by the sign to bring forth a generation that God spoke about. To a seed that will turn to generation. That's how you are made. For unto us a son is a child is given. Unto us a son is a child is born unto us. But unto us a son is given. A son is made. Sonship is a place of being made of God. Let God made you. Let God make you up. So you can function as sons. There's no room for cowardice in the kingdom of God. There's no room for people who feel inferior in the kingdom of God. You have to live up to what God will say you are. Say you are a choosing generation. You are a royal priesthood. You are a peculiar people. You are a royal breed. You are a special breed. Not born of man and woman, but born of the Spirit of God and by the water that was broken. Christ was pierced to bring you forth. The endless expectation of creation are waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. And John 1 verse 12 says to you and I, very powerful scriptures. He said, He that come to the Lord, as many that come to him, that believe in him, and receive him, to them he made to become, give the right to become sons of God. You want to remember as a child, a baby Christian? Baby Christian is not what God wants to see today. In Hebrews chapter 5, verse 11 to 14, Paul said, there are many things I want to talk to you about. But you can't know them. When you ought to be teachers, you are still taking milk. Your senses have not been exercised by God's word. Your five senses have not been synthesized by God's word. Say from verse 11 to 14, when you ought to be teachers, you ought to be matured in the kingdom. You ought to be taking a position in the kingdom. To be silencing the power of darkness. To be putting enemy to flight. You are still the one who is complaining. You are still the one who is bringing embarrassment and shame to the kingdom. You are still the one who is playing, who is playing low in the kingdom. See, Paul said, you ought to be teachers. But I can't speak to you as teachers. Just the way he spoke to the Corinthian church also. In First Corinthians chapter 3. He said, people are feeling mature from verse 1 to 10. He said, people are doing like immature. We are taking side. I'm of Paul. I'm of Apollos. Oh, Paul speak very well. No, uh, 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 Apollos is more eloquent. You see that happening in the house of God. People who are, who are legends to somebody can't even fought when they something is wrong. They are busy slapping each other's faces as, ba as babes, children. God is tired of children. 
God is tired of babes. Paul was warning them. In fact, Corinthians chapter 3 from verse 1 to 10. He says, stop this act of, of childishness. Stop this behavior. So I can even call you spiritual. You are like children, babes. And he warned them in Hebrews chapter 5, 11 to 14. He said, if you want to prove you are matured, check verse 14. Who, by reason of use of God's word, your five senses have been synthesized by God's word. The word rules your life. is no longer your five senses, but you are ruled by the word of God. That's the essence of sonship. Until you come to that place wherein your life is governed by the word of God. Your five senses don't dictate your life. But the word of God synthesizes your five senses to respond to the dictates of the Holy Spirit through God's word. You know you are taking your place of maturity and sonship. Then when there is, the devil show up, you can put you where he belongs. You look around to and fro. To and fro as one who, are, who have no sense of directions. There are many babies in the kingdom. Enough. When our uncle raised as God's children. When our uncle raised. It's a time of speed. The world is running at a high speed. As I only put it to some of my people, I tell them, say, listen to me. If you are going to pursue a car that's running, you must run ahead of that car and block the front to say, keep, don't stop running. There's a, there's a river there on the southern side. You're going to get drowned. If you must save that, that vehicle, you must run ahead of that vehicle and block the access. The world is in a high speed to damnation. The church is the answer. We need to manifest as the sons of God. For the endless expectation of the creations, wait for the manifestation of the sons of God. The sons that are born by the Spirit of God through the piercing of the Son of Jesus. A generation that God has raised to change the course of human history. He says in 2 Corinthians 5, verse 17, if any man be in Christ, it's a new creation. The old is gone. A new you is God. Let us look at the scripture again of John chapter 1, verse 12. John 1, verse 12. I know you know it very well of head. I want to read it to your hearing. But as many as receive him, to them he gave power. The right. The right. He gave the creativity. He gave, he gave the right. To become the children of God, even to them, to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on His name, to become the sons of God. I want you to grow to a place of sonship. Otherwise, you will be caught up in Galatians chapter one, sorry, chapter uh, chapter four, from verse one to seven. You see, as long as you remain a child, you are not different from a servant. But say, but God has by the Holy Spirit brought us a place of sonship. We are told in Galatians chapter 4. God by the Holy Spirit has brought us a place of sonship where we can function as sons of God. A place of accountability. A place of responsibility. A place of being principled in life. You don't begin to blame somebody else for your errors or mistake. You own it to make a change. You repent to make a move. You don't say, I sin, I made this mistake and error because of he or her. Like Adam did. He say, the woman you gave unto me made me. No! Take responsibility. That's the essence of sonship. You rule your world. You reign in your world. To bring forth the glory of God. In the light of that scripture of Romans chapter 8, just note today, God wants you to manifest, to reveal yourself. Stop hiding that gifting you have. Stop hiding that creativity you have. Stop hiding. Bring for that innovation we need to change the world. Be the answer to the quest of this pandemic if you have the ideas. Be the answer to solve human problems until Christ returns. Comfort in grace. There's no room for the child. For unto us, a child is born, and unto us a son is given, a son is made. 
God gave us a son to save us. Jesus as a child couldn't save us. As a son, he saved us. Be a son to save your family. Be a son to save your community. Be a son to save your community. Be a son to save your nation. Be a son to change the course of history in the human world. Be that son of God. Who will, be, who will reveal, who will be manifested. Manifest yourself. Show forth who you are. Stop hiding. Don't be a child. Be a son. Live like a son. Walk with your head up. Show the high. On the high hill in Christ Jesus. Stop putting your head low. Raise your head up. And show forth who you are. You are a chosen generation. You are a royal priesthood. You are a peculiar breed to show forth the praise of him that have called you from darkness unto light. They are come your way again in the name of Jesus. May God bless you. May God be with you. My book will explain more of the details than what I'm preaching to you today. May God give you direction of travel and give you the life you need in Christ. May be answer to the question of human history. Thank you for listening to me today.